We've been at CES 2025 in Las Vegas to bring you all the latest monitor news and get some hands-on time with lots of the new models that are being announced. In this video, we're going to summarize all the best and most exciting display news coming out of the event all in one place, so you can get fully up to date on everything that's been going on at the event. There's been so much happening, you don't want to miss anything here, so hopefully this will make life a lot easier. We won't cover every monitor, but we've picked all of the most interesting announcements and showcases to share with you now. You can find more info on the monitors covered in this video on our main site as well. Let's start with arguably the headline monitor announcement for the event, and that's the flurry of new 27-inch OLED monitors launched with a 4K resolution and a 240Hz refresh rate. This is the first time that this high resolution and pixel density has been available in the 27-inch consumer OLED segment, offering exceptional picture quality, detail and sharpness. Five leading manufacturers all announced their versions of the screen for CES, all based on the same new Samsung QD OLED panel. We've actually already reviewed in full ASUS's model, the ROG Swift PG27 UCDM. You'll find a review link below on our main site for that. We've also had some hands-on time during December with an early sample of MSI's MPG272 URX ahead of its final firmware and setup, so you can find a link to that video below too. ASUS's model has got a few new features of note, including their new OLED Care Pro, which adds a new Neo proximity sensor to the screen to detect when you're using it and then turn it off when you move away from the screen. That's a really handy feature for an OLED to help mitigate the risk of burn-in. They've also updated their OLED anti-flicker technology, now to version 2.0, improving the luminance compensation algorithm to reduce flicker by up to 20%, they say, compared with their previous QD OLED monitors. Their screen also supports Dolby Vision HDR and their ELMB or BFI blur reduction mode. It's expected to be released on the 21st of January, but pricing is still being finalised. MSI's MPG272 URX model features their own comprehensive range of OLED Care 2.0 features and other familiar specs from their recent OLED screens. That's expected to be released in late February at a price of US$1,099. Samsung provided very limited information about their model, the Odyssey G81SF. We don't know much about this option at the moment, but of note is the addition of their own matte anti-glare coating that they've added to their 2024 OLED lineup as well. That does a really good job of handling glare and reflections, so that's an alternative option if you don't want the semi-glossy coating of all of the other 27-inch 4K models discussed here. Gigabyte also showcased their new MO27U2 display at the event with their familiar range of tactical gaming features, but there's still plenty of information still to be confirmed for their model. Dell also announced their Alienware AW2725Q before the event. Theirs includes Dolby Vision HDR and also eARC Sound over HDMI, the same as their previous 32-inch 4K OLED model. Their screen is coming out a bit later apparently, around March 2025, but at an attractive price point of $900. US Asus, MSI and Gigabyte have all confirmed the inclusion of DisplayPort 2.1 connectivity on their screens, with the top tier UHBR20 80 gigabits per second speed supported. Dell have stuck with DisplayPort 1.4 with DSC instead, while Samsung haven't yet confirmed the connectivity for their model. That decision from Dell will be one contributing factor to their lower price point. The other big OLED gaming announcement from these same manufacturers, apart from Dell, was their new 500Hz refresh rate QD OLED monitors. Asus, MSI, Gigabyte and Samsung all had models announced which are 27 inch in size with a 2560 by 1440 resolution, but this super high refresh rate which is a big step up from the 360Hz previously available from QD OLED monitors. ASUS's model wasn't actually on show at the event, but it's due to be released in early Q2, we're told, and that will have their OLED Care Pro features, Neo Proximity Sensor, and OLED Anti-Flicker 2.0 technologies, again, like their 27-inch 4K model that we discussed a minute ago. Note that their model will feature DisplayPort 1.4 with DSC. 
MSI's model was on show though at CS, and although not functioning on the sample there, MSI told us that they will be adding a proximity motion sensor to this screen as well, which looks like it will become a mainstay in the OLED market now. Something we've been suggesting actually in our reviews for quite a while now. Their model has DisplayPort 2.1 with UHBR 20 speeds, and that's expected to be released in June 2025. Samsung again announced their equivalent Odyssey G60SF, but with very limited information and no timescales for release. Again, their model will have their added matte anti-glare coating, which differentiates it from the competition. Gigabyte also announced their own model, but were a bit light on specs and features, but we do know that theirs will include DisplayPort 2.1 with UHBR 20 speeds as well, just like MSI's model. One interesting note for all of these new 500Hz QDOLIN monitors, is that they will be the first to be certified under the VESA Display HDR500 True Black tier, a moderate step up in brightness requirements compared with True Black 400 that's used to certify all current OLED monitors. We're pending some further information on Samsung Display's latest QD OLED panels, and we'll provide a wider update in the near future, so do hit subscribe to ensure you stay up to date on that. Some of the most interesting displays at the event for us were the new 45-inch ultra-wide WOLED monitors from LG Electronics, offering a large screen size that we've seen before, but now upping the resolution to 5120x2160 or 5K2K as it's commonly known. That's a decent increase in pixel density from the 83 ppi that the lower resolution models have offered so far to around 123 ppi now. LG Electronics actually had two 45-inch ultrawide models on show, both with the LG Display WOLED panel, and both offering the same 165Hz refresh rate, but different approaches to the panel's curvature. The first is the 45GX950A, which should be released around April time at a price of US$2,000. This model has a steep 800R curvature, which we think is okay for close-up immersive gaming, like the sim racing that they had set up at the event, for instance but could be too steep and too curved for some people, especially for more general and office uses. Thankfully, LG Electronics have another model planned, the 45GX990A, which has a motorized bendable feature, and that can switch you between a steep 900R curvature or a completely flat screen. They had this set up at the event with a simple button that you could press to switch between the two modes, probably a good test actually for how robust that mechanism is, considering how much it was being pressed during the event. This model will be released later on. LG told us that the release date and pricing was still to be confirmed, but it's clearly going to be more expensive than the regular curved version. Also of note for these new screens is the support for hardware calibration, something that still seems to be unique to LG's OLED consumer screens so far, and a dual mode feature that, through the press of a button, can double your refresh rate to 330Hz if you're prepared to lower the resolution to 2560 by 1080 we should also note that DisplayPort 2.1 connectivity is included and promoted, but we confirm that this will only feature UHBR 13.5 speeds, which is not sufficient to offer an uncompressed video signal or avoid the need for DSC. There's decent 10 watt DTS Virtual X sound speakers. They're also featured on the Curve model, which is nice to see. Anyway, we're particularly looking forward to testing those screens later in the year. They look really good. One other new OLED worth a quick mention is the Dell Plus 32 inch, which was announced before the event. This is aimed at more general users than gamers with a 4K resolution like competing models currently available, but a lower 120Hz refresh rate. There's AI driven sound, Dolby Vision HDR support, USB-C and some moderate built in speakers as well. That one's expected to be released 27th of March at a price of 800 US dollars. Away from actual monitors, but definitely worth a mention, was the long-anticipated announcement from NVIDIA of their new RTX 50 series graphics cards, with key manufacturers like ASUS and MSI and others having new cards on display at the event in a range of specs and price points. These new RTX 50 series cards will finally bring DisplayPort 2.1 to NVIDIA graphics cards with full UHBR 20 speeds supported. These cards, or alternatives from AMD, will be needed to power some of the newly announced screens with an uncompressed video signal and future display specs that haven't yet been released. Great to see this now being adopted by NVIDIA, obviously. Vaser also updated their specification for DisplayPort 2.1 to version 2.1b, adding support for new active cables with longer lengths up to 3 meters. 
As far as we can tell, there's no change to the port specs for graphics cards or monitors. This is just to account for those new cable options. So screens and cards listed with DP2.1 or DP2.1A today could just as easily be labeled as 2.1B from what we can tell. Not to be outdone, the HDMI forum announced the provisional spec for their new HDMI 2.2 connection. It's in its conceptual stage at the moment with the spec expected to be finalized and provided to manufacturers later in H1 2025. What we do know is that it's expected to support bandwidths up to 96 gigabits per second and will need new so-called Ultra 96 cables. They had some prototype devices and connections at the event and even some of the first certified cables too. Don't get too excited though about HDMI 2.2 at this stage. If version 2.1 is anything to go by, it will likely be a few years before we even see this adopted on monitors and graphics cards. It's interesting to see the plans for the future though, for sure. CES wasn't all about OLED displays. There were quite a few LCD monitors announced that were interesting. Not on show at the event, but announced around the time of it was the upcoming Samsung Odyssey G7 40 inch model, which will offer a 5K 2K resolution and a 180 Hertz refresh rate. It's also expected to support Samsung's HDR10 Plus standard, but further specs and info are still pending. We also saw a couple of NVIDIA G-Sync Pulsar monitors at the event. G-Sync Pulsar is the latest generation of NVIDIA's strobing blur reduction backlight, previously known as Ultra Low Motion Blur 2. This time it's possible to use this technology at the same time as variable refresh rates, and so that should offer exceptional motion clarity for professional and competitive gamers. On show at the event was the ASUS G-Sync Pulsar monitor, model number still to be finalized, we're told. We first saw this monitor actually at Gamescom 2024 last August, but it was in a more final production stage now and should be released by the end of Q1. That was set up side by side with a fast 360 Hz OLED monitor to show you just how clear the motion clarity is with G-Sync Pulsar turned on. This model has 1440p resolution, an IPS panel, 360 Hz refresh rate, and also features NVIDIA Reflex Latency Analyzer. Acer also announced their larger 31.5 inch IPS monitor with NVIDIA G-Sync Pulsar. This is the Predator XB323QX. This model has a high 5K resolution of 5120 by 2880, combined with a 144Hz refresh rate for an impressive spec. It also supports a dual mode function for gaming at 288Hz, but a lower 1440p resolution. We don't have details yet on its release date, but the specs certainly do look interesting. MSI had a super fast 600Hz refresh rate LCD screen on show at the event with a smaller 24 inch size TN film panel. This one's got a 1080p resolution and a range of AI gaming intelligence features too, but apparently it won't offer any strobing blur reduction mode and just focuses on raw refresh rate speed instead. MSI tell us that this is gonna be released initially in China only in Q2, with other regions still to be confirmed. If you thought 600 Hz refresh rate was high, Kurui, I think that's how you pronounce it, announced their G7 monitor with a 24.5 inch sized TN film panel, a 1080p resolution, but a whopping 750 Hz refresh rate. This is the fastest we've seen actually so far from any monitor. A lot of specs and features are still to be confirmed, but it's expected to be released later in Q1 at a price probably around 1,000 US dollars. Another one on show at the event was the ASUS ROG Strix XG32UCG, which is a 31.5 inch IPS screen with a 4K 160Hz panel and support for a dual mode 1080p 320Hz mode. This model also supports their ELMB sync function for a strobing blur reduction backlight and VRR at the same time. Another interesting LCD gaming option we saw with dual mode was MSI's new 27 inch monitor, which also has a 4K resolution and 160 Hertz refresh rate. And again, the option for 1080p at 320 Hertz if you'd rather. What makes their model particularly special though, is that it has a 1152 zone mini LED backlight for high end HDR performance, including display HDR 1000 certification and high peak brightness of 1000 nits. This model will be released in Q2 2025 apparently. HP announced an interesting new gaming LCD around the same time as CES 2 with their Omen 27QS. This is a 27 inch size screen with 1440p resolution 
and 280 hertz refresh rate, but it uses a new IPS black panel, which will offer a 2000 to 1 contrast ratio, twice that of most modern IPS monitors. It's the first time that we've seen a refresh rate this high actually from an IPS black panel. That's going to be released in June at around 450 US dollars. In case you're not a gamer, there were a couple of IPS black office monitors announced by Dell in their ever popular UltraSharp series. Both models have a 4K resolution and 120Hz refresh rate, along with an enhanced 3000 to 1 contrast ratio from their IPS black panels. Useful connectivity features like Thunderbolt 4 and USB-C with 140W power delivery are also offered. Both models should be released on the 25th of Feb, with the 32 inch priced at $950 and the 27 inch priced at $700. Back to gaming monitors for a moment, and there were a few smart monitors announced, with differing approaches to operating system software, but all offering features that you'd normally find only in the TV space, like built-in streaming apps and that kind of thing. LG Electronics had a 39-inch ultra-wide OLED monitor with their own web OS built-in like you'd find on LG TVs. That's a curved screen with an 800R curvature, 240Hz refresh rate, and so it could make a good multi-purpose gaming monitor with smart TV features. That's due to be released not until Q3 2025 at a price around $1,600. We didn't see this at the event itself, but Samsung announced their M90SF monitor with a 31.5 inch size screen, 4K resolution and 165Hz refresh rate. Theirs will use their Tizen OS operating system and has a range of AI picture enhancements, but release information and further specs have not been announced yet. MSI had a smart monitor in their modern range as well, with a 27-inch 4K IPS panel and a Google-based operating system, including support for Google TV, Google Assistant and Google Cast. This one should be released later in Q1 at a price of 499 US. To wrap up, we thought we'd cover some new ProArt Professional displays as well from ASUS. There were three monitors which were 31.5 inch or 32 inch in size, with a major focus on colour accuracy. They all feature the company's Lux Pixel Anti-Glare Coating, which does a really good job of handling reflections and glare. The PA32UCE is a 4K resolution model, which also features a built-in motorised colorimeter. The PA32QCV, ups the resolution to 6K, but it doesn't have a built-in colorimeter this time, but all of these ProArt screens support hardware level calibration from external colorimeters. The PA32KCX goes even further with a massive 8K resolution and 275 PPI pixel density. That 8K model also has a very high-end 4096 zone mini LED backlight for HDR content creation and consumption, which should offer very impressive performance. If you're after a professional screen and want to know loads more about the ASUS ProArt range, we've recently updated our Roundup article which covers all of the features and information that you'd need to know. So do check that out, that's linked in the description below. Finally, LG also announced a new 31.5 inch size monitor in their professional ultra fine range, which is the world's first 6K high resolution monitor to come with Thunderbolt 5 connectivity, something which Apple introduced late last year with the launch of their new Mac Mini and MacBook Pro models, powered by M4 Pro chips. Their model uses an IPS black panel, which has a slightly different 6K resolution to the ASUS model, but should offer a higher contrast ratio natively. It's got hardware calibration support again, and it's aimed at media professionals primarily. Further specs and information is still pending on that one. So there you go. That's all of the major monitor and display news from this year's CES event. Loads to look forward to in there for many different use cases. Do let us know in the comments section below which monitor you're most interested in. And if you found this content useful, please give us a quick like and subscribe to help the channel out. Thank you for watching and we'll catch you next time.